Hello, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about what actually is an ODE, uh, or what is just an ordinary derivative. Um, and I think it's kind of the type of thing that's not really talked about in a great deal of detail uh, in a course sort of like this. I think it's, it's kind of like you get straight onto the methods of how to solve ODEs, okay? And you, you know, you just kind of mindless, you as a student just kind of mindlessly learn all these different methods and learn that when you've got that kind of situation you do this and when you do that well, you do this but you've not really got any idea of the context of actually what's going on and when you look at actually what's going on to me at least it's really exciting um, and I think if you've got a bit of an understanding of what's going on kind of behind the scenes you know behind all the methods and stuff I think it helps a great deal because it helps to build up this kind of picture of maths I mean, ODEs, to me at least, is really interesting. And actually, uh, so is PDE, so differential equations in general. I find them really interesting. But in this video, we're going to really talk about what an ODE actually is. Uh, and actually, we're going to, in order to answer that question, what is an ODE, we're also going to have to look at kind of the other case, the other type of differential equation, which is partial differential equation, kind of saying you've got something to compare it to. Yeah, so you can see the differences and then you can kind of understand what an ODE really is. All right, so first of all, I'm just going to start with, so this is called what is an ODE. That's the title of this video. So what is an ODE? So first of all, I'm just going to start with an equation, an equation which you probably would have met, well, definitely at A-level, probably at GCSE as well. Okay, and it looks something like this. So this is just, I'm just making this up. It can be anything like this, just to demonstrate a point. So y equals 4x squared plus 2x plus 6. Okay. Well, are you happy then that what variables have I got going on here? Well, I've got a y. Okay, I've got a y. And that's equal to something on the right-hand side. And everything on the right-hand side is in terms of x. So in other words, this is a function, a function in terms of x. And we write it like this. So it's, one, so it's kind of notation. Well, if I was to draw this on a graph, okay, I'd only need two dimensions because I've got two variables. So um, a graph is just showing how one variable changes with respect to another variable. Okay, so in this case, it's showing how y changes with, or how y can change with respect to x. It's a relationship, really, a graph is. I shouldn't say how it changes. I should say it's a relationship between x and y. And it's a visual relationship between x and y. So you'd have a set of, you put in an x value here, you get a corresponding y value out. Okay, so it's a relationship. And it would look, I don't know, something like this. Okay, and I'm just going to consider this section here. Uh, obviously, it will go over here as well. Uh, but I'm just going to consider that section over here just for, well, because it looks easier. <laughs> All right, but yeah, you just get an idea. It's just going to be some graph, and it's going to exist in this, what's known as an XY plane. So I'm only going to need two dimensions in order to draw this. All right. Well, if I then take the derivative of this, Okay, I take the derivative of y. So in other words, I ask the question, well, okay, over time, as we go forward through time, how does y change? Or well, not necessarily even through time, as I just move through x. So in other words, I start here and I, I sort of move through x. So I change and vary the value of x. Okay, how does y change? All right. Well, what I'm basically saying there is, what is the gradient? That's another way of talking about gradient. It's just the rate of change of one variable with respect to another. So in this case, as I change x, so as I move through x, imagine that I'm sort of taking a walk, I start at the origin, okay, and I sort of take a walk and I travel through all the possible values of x, okay, you can go positive direction or negative direction. Well, what I'm asking myself is how does y change at, the, at each corresponding, at each corresponding um, value for x? So say if I choose this value for x over here, okay, what is the corresponding y value and how does it change? As I move, say, from here, which is x1, to x2, how does it change, um, so I move from here to here, well, how does it change in the y direction? Okay, so y1 and y2. So basically, I'm asking myself, if I differentiate y with respect to x, what I'm saying is, as I vary x, how does y change? So I'm making a comparison, if you like, between the two. I'm just seeing how one variable changes with respect to another. And that's really at the heart of uh, everything to do with differentiation. Okay, differentiation is just literally just modelling change, yeah? We call it rate of change, how quickly something changes, but it's essentially just change, okay? And this is really at the heart of everything to do with differentiation, okay? So, di so basically, we can, if we differentiate y with respect to x, what I'm basically saying is, how does y change as we move through x? As we vary x, how does y change, all right? And of course, you know a formula for differentiating this, okay? And um, that's fine. Now I want to consider a slightly different function. So now say we have z. So I'm just basically now adding an x dimension. And on the right-hand side, instead of it just being in terms of x, okay, I've got it in terms of x 
and y as well. So two variables I've got it in terms of. So I don't know, let's say we have 4x squared plus 3xy plus 2y squared, say. So now what I've got is I've got my z variable um, in terms of a function. I'm going to just call it g to just sh show it's a different function to this function up here, f. Um, g, but my variables are, my function is in terms of x and y. So in order to find z, I need x and y in order to define it. And now if I draw it, I'm going to now need three dimensions because fairly obviously, you know, um, I've got three variables. OK, so I'm going to call this this uh, dimension down here x. So my coming out, if you like, coming out towards you, I'm going to call that x. I'm going to call the horizontal one, uh, the horizontal plane, the horizontal axis, I'm going to call that y. And then my vertical going up and down, I'm going to call that z. OK, and what I'm going to end up with is essentially a 3D plot now. Because I've got three variables going on, which means I'm in three dimensions. So I'm going to end up with a 3D plot, and we call that a surface. Okay, so I'll just draw a very rough example of a surface. Uh, and you know that's what this um, that's what this function here is giving. It's giving me a 3D plot. Okay. Well, now if I want to find how one variable changes with respect to the other variable, I can't do that. I can't do it like we did up here. You know, we just had two variables, so it's fairly easy to see that we just, as we change x, what happens to y? Well, now what I need to do is I need to be clever. Okay, because now I want to see how z changes, um, and I need to choose how z changes with respect to which variables. So in other words, I need to choose my direction. So if you like, I start at my origin, and I take a walk. Well, do I travel sort of horizontally in the y direction, or do I travel sort of coming out towards you, so forward and backwards, uh, in the x direction? So I have to choose my direction, which I vary, you know, my values which I vary. Do I vary x or do I vary y? In actual fact, I can vary either one. So if I vary x, I'm basically differentiating z. So I'm seeing how z changes with respect to z. All right, so I'm basically differentiating z with respect to x. OK, but actually this notation isn't strict. Uh, I'm just going to do for complete this y as well. So I have and if I'm going in this direction, I'm differentiating z, but this time with respect to y. So I'm seeing how z changes with respect to y. But actually this notation isn't strictly correct. You see, like up here, I use d. OK, if you like, this is certain, uh, certainty or definiteness. Um, because so I'm using d to signify that because we can only differentiate one variable with respect to another because you know, we've only got one choice of that because there's only y and there's only x. So we can on the only choice that we can do is differentiate y with respect to x. So one variable with respect to another because we can only, you know, we can only differentiate one variable, variable with respect to the other because there's only two variables existing. Now here, I've got two, three variables existing. So I can either differentiate z with respect to x, okay? So I can differentiate z with respect to x or I can differentiate z with respect to y. OK, and like I say, if we differentiate z with respect to x, effectively what I'm doing is I'm going in this direction. So I'm coming out towards you. OK, so I'm moving in this direction um, along my surface and I'm seeing how z varies as I move in this direction. OK, so forwards and backwards. And likewise for y, if I differentiate with respect to y, I'm basically seeing how z changes as I, vary, as I go left to right, as I vary y. Right. But I can't consider them all together. Well, not just yet anyway. But let's come back to this notation. Because I'm not differentiating the whole function, okay, I'm not seeing how all the fun how all the variables change, um, you know, together. Because I can't move in x's and y's. I can only move either in the x direction or either in the y direction. I can't see how the function changes with respect to all of the variables at the same time. I have to basically choose a direction. So in order to signify that, we use this notation. We use del's, okay. So del x. It's, it's basically just a small letter delta. OK, so it's not, if you like, a definite integral, uh, so not an integral, a definite derivative, because I have to choose which variable I want to differentiate with respect to. So if I differentiate with respect to x, then I'm effectively ignoring my y variable. OK, and actually, when we differentiate this, it, hopefully you've seen this before, if we differentiate z with respect to x, we have to actually treat y as a constant, because we have to say, well, we can't change y. So y just has to stay the same. So we effectively just treat y as a constant. If it stays the same, it's a constant, right? And likewise for y, if we differentiate z with respect to y, well, we're not varying x. So therefore, we have to treat x as a constant because it can't change, yeah, if we're, if we're moving along y. So this is kind of the idea. So this is kind of like not a definite integral. It's an indefinite. So I keep saying integral. Because definite integral and indefinite integrals are completely something completely separate altogether. But this is not a 
This is not a definite derivative. It's an indefinite derivative. OK, so we actually say that this is, if you like, definite. This is definite. OK, or the correct mathematical name is this is ordinary. OK, this is ordinary derivative. OK, you're used to these. These kind of crop up all the time um, where we've just got one variable with respect to the other variable. Right. And this is what's known as an ordinary derivative. OK, but here where we have to actually choose which variable with we're differentiating with respect to, we're effectively only getting part of the picture. Yeah, we're only we're only moving along part of this plane. We can only move in one direction. We're not moving along the whole plane, if you like. We're not moving along this whole surface. So we're only moving one. We're only considering one part at a time. Yeah. And so that's known as the, you know, it's one part. So it's known as the partial derivative. OK, so this is this is the partial um, derivative. When we've got a function of more than one variable, it's known as the partial derivative. So yeah, let's let's try and summarise it. So basically, if we've got y equals f of x, so in other words, we've got one variable in terms of another variable, this is known as an ordinary derivative. Ordinary derivative, okay? But if we've got now a variable in terms of more than one variable, uh, yeah, so one variable in terms of more than one variable, so say z is equal to, so in this example, z, I changed my notation, remember we used g before. So now g is, uh, z is in terms of x and y as well. It's not just in terms of one variable, it's in terms of now two variables. Then we'll have to do um, partial derivatives. Or we'll have to take partial derivatives. Okay, so that's kind of the difference. When we, when we want to differentiate something, um, so yeah, maybe if I just write that in as well, that's not strictly complete just yet. So if I want to differentiate this, I can differentiate y with respect to x. That's the only choice I can have. So that's known as an ordinary derivative. All right. Uh, but if I want to differentiate this thing, I have to basically choose, I have to basically choose which variable I differentiate with respect to. So either I can differentiate with respect to z x or I can differentiate with respect to y. So in other words, which direction I'm moving into. And this is known as a partial derivative because I can only consider part of the function at a time. All right, so I can only consider how part one, you know, part of the function changes with respect to uh, one part of like the variable kind of thing. So either how it changes with respect to x or changes with respect to y. Hopefully, I've made that kind of clear. Now, of course, when you come on to this case, you can consider the whole thing together if you use vector notation. If you just write all this as a list, okay. So if we write this as a list, so we've got the derivative with respect to x and we've got the derivative with respect to y. Yeah. If we write it as a list, then we just basically get the um, we can write it as a vector, and the vector of all those partial derivatives put together um, is known as the grad operator. So in this case, this would be grad of z or grad of g because that's our function. Okay, um, but you know that that's kind of like a, a by the by. The most important thing in this video is basically just looking at um, what's the difference between an ordinary and a partial um, derivative differential derivative. Okay, now let's look at a different, the idea of a differential equation. So now we've got the idea of an ordinary derivative. That's kind of like when we've only got two variables going on. So we've got y in terms of x. And a partial derivative is when we've got z in terms of more than one variable. So in terms of this case, x and y. But we can have x, y, as, you know, as many variables as we like on the right-hand side. It's just one variable in terms of more than one variable. Um, now we're going to talk about this thing called a differential, differential equation. Okay, differential equation and it kind of using these same ideas so we can have an ordinary di differential equation and a partial differential equation and it's exactly the same idea so basically all a differential equation is is it's an well let's just look at um, a more familiar example so let me go back to my example of you know an equation which we're fairly used to so let's say y equals we had the example before I think it was 4x squared plus 2x plus 6 right well this is the example of an equation yeah, because we've got y in terms of x, right? But all a differential equation is, is an equation which involves its derivatives as well. So if we differentiate this, we'll get y dash. We can write dy by dx, but let's just for convenience write y dash. It's just another way of writing the derivative of y with respect to x. Uh, it's clear it's respect to x here because we've only got y's and x's going on. So y dash is this thing differentiated. So we've got 8x plus 2. And then we can also have, say, like y double dash. Yeah, um, and that's going to be equal to 8. And then obviously anything beyond that is just going to go to 0. OK, so we can have two derivatives from this function. Well, now what we can do, all the differential equation is, is it's just linking all of these derivatives and the function back together. So we might have, for example, 3y double dash plus 6y dash plus, 
y. Okay, and that might be equal to something. And if the right hand side, by the way, is equal to zero, that's known as homogeneous or homogeneous. Homogeneous. I say homogeneous because it's then because it's how it's spelt kind of thing, but I suppose the correct way of saying it in English is homogeneous. Um, and that just kind of means that there's only one kind of thing going on. It's all equal to zero. So in other words, the right hand side doesn't vary at all. All right. Uh, but it can also but it can be equal to some function, okay, whatever it wants to be. Um, on the right hand side and then we talk about how we're going to solve these kind of in future videos but that's kind of the idea of a differential equation i mean if you link back to our idea of that derivative is just change looks at change right well a differential equation is just an equation is just an equation that models change so for example you know you can have um you know you can look at how one variable you know uh Anything which changes basically uses this 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 kind of differential equation. Differential equations are really really useful. If you've ever seen the film, it's I think it's a not a Beautiful Life. Oh, I've forgotten the name. Um, it might be a Beautiful Life. It's the one with the mathematician John Nash in. And John Nash he got the um, equivalent of the Nobel Prize in mathematics because uh, obviously there's not a Nobel Prize in mathematics. He got a Fields Medal, I think it's called. Uh, and he basically, he was looking at these types of things. He showed how, uh, how if we move from kind of one dimension to another, well, that's a change, okay? We need a change of variables then. And to model that change, we use differential equations. And actually, that's where this thing called Jacobian, we're going to talk about a Jacobian later on, comes in. Okay, if we're moving, say, from a dimension which involves x's and y's to a di dimension, you know, say, polar coordinates, for example, which involves r's and thetas, um, it's not drawn like that, I know, but basically if we move from one dimension with one variable in, or with, you know, certain variables in, to another dimension with other variables in, so in other words we're changing dimensions, well that's a change, and anything which changes can be modelled using a differential equation. Some of them can be really simple, but some of them can be really difficult, or more complex. Okay, and in general partial differential equations, which is in other words equations which, you know, say if this was in terms of, now say if we had, um, Z or U or whatever in terms of say um, X and Y now, so more than one variable going on, then we need to use, and if we wanted to model this, we had like Z dash and Z double dash, etc, etc, etc. Normally we use U, by the way, in partial, der partial derivatives. But now if we've got this going on, okay, and then we have an equation, say like uh, 3Z plus 6Z dash, this isn't the right notation, but doesn't matter, you get the idea. Uh, Z double dash, maybe if I make that a double dash instead, okay, equals something equals another function. Well now because it's in terms of more than one variable, we call that a partial differential equation because the techniques which we need to solve this type of equation is going to be slightly different because now we're involving more than one variable. Um, yeah. So basically if there's just one variable happening, or so y in terms of x, then it's known as an ordinary differential equation because you've only got kind of two variables to consider. Right? But if you've got say like more than one variable going on, then you, um, then you have to consider it known as a partial differential equation. So we call that PDE, and this is like an ODE. Uh, this is an ODE here, PDE here. This is an example of an ODE, right? And then a PDE would just be an example of that, okay? So that's all the difference between an ODE and PDE is. That's kind of what's going on. So anything which changes can be modelled using a differential equation, because that is literally what a differential equation is doing. Um, an ODE is just where it's one variable in terms of another variable, so you've only got kind of two variables going on. Uh, by the way, we will come on to things like linear systems later on, where we can look at having more than one variable, but we can base, ooh, basically what we can do is reduce like a really complex PDE into an ODE, all right? And that's what's happening later on with, say, like linear systems. We might have more than one variable going on, but because we can treat them as individual ODEs, then, we, then it comes under the category of ODEs under the syllabus of this course. Um, but PDEs is kind of like a more difficult thing to solve, but it's still, you know, it's, it's not unrelated. Um, it's, it's still kind of very much going on. And if you want a really good picture of kind of modelling how things change over time, then I definitely recommend looking into ODs and also PDs as well. Because if you cover ODs and PDs as well, that's pretty much covered all the different scenarios which you can get, or at least the basics of all the different scenarios you can get. So anything which changes can be modelled using a differential equation, either an ordinary differential equation or a more advanced kind of partial differential equation. If you know the techniques for two, then you're sorted really. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. We talked about what's an ordinary derivative and a partial derivative. Okay, and then we talked about kind of how it links to a differential equation, so really what's a differential equation. And that's really what these set of videos are all about, how we can look at solving, more specifically for this set of videos, ordinary differential equations, but also we can solve partial differential equations as well.